Hello and welcome to this presentation where I'll be discussing Microsoft 365 tenant to tenant migrations. These migrations are a common task amongst organizations and I'm here to show you why the journey does not have to be daunting and how headaches and business downtime can be limited. Shortly, I'll be going into who might find this presentation beneficial and the likely people that, that would need to be involved with such a project. Some of the reasons why you might want to migrate in the first place and the associated challenges that come along with a project like this. And finally, I'll be delving into Crimson's migration framework, which can assist you on this journey. First, a bit about me. I'm Manish Kumar and I've held IT positions across the education, government, engineering and manufacturing sectors over a 12 year period where I've been heavily embedded in the IT infrastructure department, making continuous improvements, leading disaster recovery operations, performing exchange on premise to online uh, migrations, including tenant to tenant migrations as well. For the last four years, I've been based at Crimson, where I've been assisting customers nationwide to either adopt or migrate to the cloud, with Microsoft 365 and Azure being the backbone technologies. So who is going to find this session beneficial? The short answer is a range of people. The CIO might be tasked with ensuring that this project is a success. The IT manager will be involved as they understand the complexities of running a multi-tenant environment. Then you've also got the infrastructure or email engineer who is working with the environment on a day-to-day -day basis and they will have a strong steer on the, on the migration strategy and the support issues that may arise. A tenant tenant migration is not solely focused on exchange or SharePoint. There may be other considerations on the on-premise network, such as Active Directory, ADFS, or the network perimeter. And you really need a well-rounded view of the entire environment before a project like this can be taken on. There will be costs associated with the project as well, and the finance director may be a direct sponsor of this project. Here are some of the core reasons as to why a migration may occur in the first place. Most common reason is a merger or an acquisition. So your organization has acquired another company and needs to merge core business units. Or perhaps you've been running a multi-tenant environment for a number of years now, but inefficiencies have started to surface, or there's a shared resource such as a CRM system that needs to be utilized across the group. Alternatively, you may need to split the tenants out a business unit was perhaps sold in your organization, therefore needs to be migrated to an entirely different tenant. Now there are a number of challenges associated with a tenant migration. If this was 10 years ago, you might only be focusing on exchange mailboxes, but because the product has grown so rapidly over the last few years, we now have one drive for business associated with mailboxes, security and compliance considerations such as retention policies, SharePoint Online and Microsoft Teams now must also be taken into consideration. So the subcomponents of 365 must be carefully assessed and discovered to ensure a successful migration over to the destination tenant. You've also got on-premise active directories that you might be running with Azure AD Connect. So how do you get the source identities talking to the destination tenant? With a project like this, there will always be business downtime and this needs to be accepted by the organization. However, it can be limited. The biggest challenge of all, Microsoft do not currently support this migration path. It was announced at, at Ignite that this problem was acknowledged, but at the time of this video, Microsoft have not made any further announcements about their roadmap. I'd now like to share Crimson's migration framework, which can ensure a smooth project delivery. First, we start out with the discovery phase, where we're performing a deep dive discovery on the infrastructure and 365 tenant. And as we transition into the planning phase, this is where we document the migration approach and establish timelines. 
for the migration, we're executing the project deliverables, utilizing the third party tool for the data migration and establishing a communication plan. When the cutover has been performed, then we'll be entering a state of hypercare where the support teams will be tuned in to provide support to the employees and address any teething issues post go live. Now let's take a look into a bit more detail for each phase. When you begin the discovery phase, it's a good idea to start with your on-premise environment and your identity model. So if you have no documentation, regarding your on-premise environment, now is a good time to get this documented. And you will also want to document your Azure Active Directory topology. The most common one being where you have an on-premise Active Directory with an Azure AD Connect server and the users are being synchronized to your Microsoft 365 tenant. The less common one is if, is if you have an Active Directory forest with two, with two Azure AD Connect servers branching off to two tenants. You'll also want to identify whether there are any other authentication methods involved, such as ADFS and the domain forest functional level. We need to be identified as well. And you'll want to identify how much bandwidth you have as a tenant migration will force users to reconfigure their Outlook profiles and emails will be re-downloaded to machines. This will impact your available bandwidth. We can then move on to a deep dive discovery of the Microsoft 365 tenant, where you can start looking at the number of mailboxes and the size of his mailboxes and any permissions that are associated with the mailboxes are used as utilizing personal archives or PST files. What are the number of shared mailboxes and the number of users that have access to these mailboxes? You'll also want to identify number of users that are using OneDrive for business. Is there enough licensing in the destination and source tenants to handle this migration? And all of this can be achieved through combination of the Microsoft 365 admin portal. There are third party tools on the market as well, as well as utilizing PowerShell scripts. When it comes to performing a discovery on your SharePoint environment, there are a number of subcomponents that must be assessed. For example, you have document libraries, SharePoint workflows, web parts, or perhaps you're using wikis. You might also be using a combination between modern and classic sites. So it's good, good to get all of this um, documented so you can decide which elements need to be migrated to the destination tenant. Microsoft Teams has gained popularity, especially during the pandemic. We are all now on video calls, sharing content within channels internally and externally. So this is quite an important component of 365 that does need to be migrated. It's quite difficult at the moment and challenging to migrate the entire contents of Teams as is from A to B. And that's largely down to APIs. However, you still want to perform a Teams and channel inventory, list out all the Microsoft Office 365 groups that are associated with the Teams. Do you want to migrate the channel chat content across too? Do you also need the private conversations within Teams as this is quite challenging to migrate at the moment? Are there any third party applications and permissions associated with the Teams? As we move over to the planning phase, this is really where you want to engage all key stakeholders across the business. They will be important as they'll need to drive key business decisions forward, which may stall or delay the project. And depending on the size of your environment and the project itself, you might want to assign a project manager at this stage who can help establish the timelines and key dependencies. You can all agree on what success looks, looks like and also if there are any other wider projects on the radar that might directly impact this migration. This is a bit of a traditional approach, but 
it's a good idea to have a waterfall plan so you don't miss any key steps within the project. For example, you've got the communication plan, performing a pilot migration before you start migrating the bulk of the data. So a plan will really help engage all the key stakeholders and ensure that you're running to plan as well throughout the different stages. When it comes to the migration stage, you will have three core migration strategies that you will need to consider. The first one being Big Bang. This is where you migrate in the entire contents after the MX records have been changed. Now, this is a very straightforward approach and it's also cost effective. But the biggest con being that users might not have access to their data on Go Live. This can cause business downtime and loss of productivity. So Big Bang is really advised for very small environments. Next, you've got a pre-stage migration. This is where you decide to migrate all the historical email ahead of the cutover. And then you perform a delta pass after a cutover has been performed. This means that the bulk of the data is already available for all users after go live and the delta will be minimal as you'll only be backtracking a few days or few weeks. The con here is that the final delta will not sync the updates, deletions or any items that have been moved. So if people are making any changes within their outlook structures and directories, adding new folders, deletions, these will unfortunately not be carried across to the destination tenant. And finally, you've got the quick switch method. This is where you need to achieve a very quick cutover date and you can choose to migrate only the newest emails and backfill the historical emails post cutover. The biggest pro is here that migration data can be achieved very quickly. Big con, again, similar to Big Bang, the historical emails won't be available post cutover and these will slowly start to trickle through. Um, in the coming days and weeks, depending on the size of your environment. As highlighted earlier, Microsoft does not currently support tenant to tenant migrations. So you must use a third party tool to move data from A to B. Crimson are a bit tight in partner. However, there are a number of other vendors on the market to choose from. Word of advice when selecting your migration platform, please ensure that they offer support on weekends. As most cutovers are traditionally carried out on late Fridays and the Delta Pass will run over the course of a weekend. So if you get any issues and support is not available, then you will run into major issues. Also, when you move data from source to destination tenants, Microsoft will impose throttling. But this can be lifted by Microsoft on demand. So it's one thing to bear in mind. And once the cutover has been performed, we will enter a state of hypercare. And this is where the support staff come to life to assist employees across the organization with any teething issues that they might have. And the support team should be ideally engaged during the planning stage so they're well aware of a cutover date and they have access to all the latest documentation and guides to help users. For example, documentation might be needed to reconfigure mobile devices. You might also want to prepare floor walkers if appropriate, if it's a big call center type environment, have people walking around to ensure the Outlook profiles have been reconfigured successfully, if they have any other issues, missing emails, etc. This is also a good idea. I would like to end this session by highlighting some key takeaway points. Firstly, you will want to involve all key stakeholders from the get go. This will help for everyone to agree a project goal, the scope, tease out all the key dependencies by asking all the right questions and having the right people there to answer these questions. Then you'll want to perform a detailed structured discovery with Exchange, Microsoft Teams, SharePoint. And finally, don't forget about security. There's data loss prevention, retention policies, archiving policies. These may be set in the source but not in the destination or vice versa so there's some key business decisions there and also agree a migration strategy with the business is it going to be a big bang pre-stage or a quick switch style 
and finally you'll want to produce a project plan and follow it as closely as possible. I hope you found this session beneficial and if you do have any questions or require assistance with a tenant migration please do get in touch with Crimson.